Hello and welcome to Reignite. My name is Jesse. Uh, we're going to have another session here where we study God's Word and, and try to uh, and apply it to our lives and how we can uh, live more closely our lives in the image of, uh, that, uh, of Jesus Christ and, and live out His truth in our world. I've entitled this session, Trust and Obey or uh, Gloom and Doom. See, often in times in life, and we'll all face it, we may be facing them right now, uh, we'll face moments in life where things just don't go the way we expect them to. Things aren't go just aren't going our way. Things are just going really, really hard, and, and things are, are really tough. And in those moments, we really have two options. We can, um, the preferable option is we can trust and obey God. Uh, we, can, we can follow Him, and even though things aren't going the way that we'd like, we can say, God, you're still my God. I still trust in you. I still trust you as the sovereign Lord over my life. I still trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. And even though things aren't going the way that I'd like, you're still sovereign over it all, and you're still the one that I put my hope and my trust in. That's, that's the preferable option. That's the option that, we're, that I'm going to um, recommend to you, and we're going to look at Psalm 31 um, as, a, as a way to understand that. That, that that's the preferable option. There's also the second option where we can reject God. Uh, we can go down the gloom and doom trail. Uh, we can say that God has forgotten me or God doesn't exist or, or God doesn't care about me or God isn't really in control of it all. And there's a, if you want, you can pause it now or you can wait till the end. I, I've, I'll post in the comment section on Facebook and YouTube. Just a funny video from the old show, Hee Haw, that's kinda, that exemplifies that gloom and doom where everything goes wrong. You can pause the video here if you'd like and come back and finish it or if you want to just wait to the end and watch that. It's, it's about a minute and a half clip. Um, at any point, you can you can go ahead and do that. But our the option that we're going to talk about, of course, and the preferable option is to trust in God, even when we're facing trouble, even when we're facing hardships, even when we're facing moments in life that it seems like our world is just spiraling out of control. I'm actually kind of in one of those moments right now. Um, things are not going the way that I've envisioned them to go these past couple of months. Hardships in relationships, hardships um, just in in life at, at in church. Um, some things with, as I pursue my call to ministry. Um, something similar to what we're going to look at that was happening in David's life where, where false things are being said and, and just just really hardships and I'm sure you can relate to that you may be in a point like that in your life right now where just things are just not going the way that you want and it's hard to really trust in God at times and trust him as sovereign and you may ask the question is God is this really your plan God is this really what you have planned for me you, we see that in the Bible oftentimes we just when I'm recording this we just came through the Christmas season you know the birth of Jesus Christ Mary and Joseph these no name poor dirt poor people from a know nothing town they get chosen to be the the, the the parents of the Son of God you know all the things that happen in Jesus's birth that Mary when she's nine months pregnant has to travel on a 70 mile journey to Bethlehem when they get there there's no place for them to stay they have to give birth to the Son of God in a stable he has to be laid in a manger a, a thing that's used to feed animal and cattle just it seems like man is this really God's plan but of course it was all of the things that happened there were a part of God's plans all a part of fulfilling God's will all a part of fulfilling prophecies of the Son of God and how it would come about we see that uh, through the rest of the New Testament Jesus uses 12 disciples again no nothing people um, and Jesus teaches about um, his his upside down kingdom if you will where the last will be first and the first will be last um, and he comes for the, for the not for the high and mighty, not for the poor, not for the top of society. Uh, he comes for the, the, the poor, the, the low, the downcast, the immigrant. Um, he comes for those people, not, not the people that we would expect the king, the son of God would come for. Um, he uses Paul, um, this guy that is literally killing Christians. He ends up, um, through his power and through his strength, um, having him, leading him to become a, a Christian, the greatest missionary. Um, that, that ever lived and brought more Christians into fellowship with Christ than, than probably anyone has ever done that. And we see that also in the life of David. Um, this is the King David. Uh, we see here in Psalm 31, uh, we'd expect things for the king, the, um, a person that God calls a man after his own heart. We'd expect things to go perfectly for David. We'd expect things to go um, just smoothly and he'd never have any trouble. But here in Psalm 31, we'll look at the first 13 verses to begin. In these 13 verses, we see that things are not going perfectly for David. He's experienced deep anguish. He's experiencing a lot of trouble. And a lot of the same troubles uh, that I just talked about, I'm experiencing some slander and some just false um, 
false things being said about me. I'm sure you've experienced that in your life. And, and a lot of things that we'll experience in our life, um, a lot of feelings, a lot of feelings of despair that we'll experience, David talks about right here. And then in verse 14, though, after we read about all these 13 verses of troubles that David is facing, we see that David chooses to trust the Lord and, and still confess him as Lord, still confess him as sovereign. So I'll begin here. I'll read the first 13 verses of Psalm number 31. Um, I'll be reading from the NIV version of the Bible. These are the words of David. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my God and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set, me free, set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am in the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery, for I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. So let's just take a moment there. I mean, that, that this psalm and, and these verses really, David is experiencing deep anguish. And we'll, we'll just take a moment to reflect on, on some of the things that, that he's experiencing here. Uh, going to the, the beginning of um, Psalm 31, he says, David says that he's been put in a trap, a trap that he says that has been secretly laid for him. Um, think about those moments in your life where where again things are just going bad and we can almost seem like or, or a lot of time our natural reaction is oh god has, has set this trap for me because i've done something bad god has made this bad moment this bad thing come into my life because i've done something wrong and now he's punishing me and that's how, kind of how david feels like he's like a secret trap has been laid for him but but because god bad things come to us i've just been reading a book on suffering and the relationship with god um, oftentimes although god could use suffering and pain and and bad things to get our attention and it could be a I guess a form of punishment oftentimes it's not that there can be times in life where where suffering comes because we're actually doing the right thing and that that seems counterintuitive but but hear me out on this think about in your life maybe you're doing the right thing you're living a good life um, you're you're working at a job you're doing very well at that job you're not doing anything wrong but God calls you to a different job for me in my life I, I was living a, a pretty good life um, I was doing a, I was successful in my career as a as a salesman, but God called me into pastoral ministry. He led me to a different place, and there's been many trials and, 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 and hardships that have come because of that. that. Those trials and hardships haven't come because I've done anything wrong. They've come because God had a greater purpose. God had a greater plan for me in mind. And that can happen in your own life. It may not be a call to pastoral ministry. It could be a, a job in your same field. It's just at a different place. It's at a different um, it's at a different company. God wants you at this different place, not where you are. And it's not because um, you're, he's punishing you for anything. It's because he has a greater plan. He has a greater purpose for you. Um, it, it, suffering and pain and hardships can come not because we're doing something wrong. It could be because he has something. God wants something um, better for us. And there might be some pain and some struggle uh, getting to that point. But, but God really just wants us to um, want something good for us at the end. There may be some experience um, some trouble in getting there and, and that's I think what maybe um, David is experiencing here too as well uh, David says that he's experienced affliction and so much soul that his soul is in anguish this, this what we see here is this is not just David's had a tough day David is experiencing uh, prolonged hardship and affliction his soul is in anguish the the uh, Hebrew word nefesh for soul that that encompasses the whole body the whole person the whole self um, his body is in complete anguish. I'm sure you've been there in your life. I know I've been there. I feel like sometimes I'm there right now at this point in my life. Whereas your just entire life, your whole body, uh, physical, mental, spiritual, 
uh, aspects of your life. It's just consumed by whatever hardship you're facing. That no matter what you try to do, no matter how you try to move ahead, you're just faced with the hardship. Uh, you're just faced with the struggle and pain. And that's how David is right now. His whole body, his whole soul is afflicted. It's in anguish. It's in the distress. Um, his, it says, he continues on, that his eyes are growing weak in his sorrow. He's consumed by his anguish. He's experienced years of groaning. Again, this is a prolonged struggle with David. That can You've probably been there in your life or maybe you're in a job and it's in a tough situation. You have a hard, you have a bad relationship with a coworker or a hard relationship with your boss and you have to go there every single day and face these hardships. Year, day in, day out, month in, month out, maybe year in, year out, you're just facing these hardships and you're just praying, God, take this away from me. Or maybe a broken relationship in a family. That's something that you could, that's something that you, you can't really get away from your hard relationship in your family. Or as Paul says, a, a, a thorn in your side, something that is just there for you day in and day out, a hardship, a struggle, an anguish, a pain that God is just not taking away from you. And you have to face it day in and day out. Um, that there's so many times where like, God, why is this your plan? Why can't you take this away from me? If you really were a good and faithful God and all powerful, why wouldn't you take this away? Um, and, and David in his his eyes are growing weak in sorrow. This is to convey that David has spent his time crying. His eyes are weak. He's out of tears. That's how much pain and anguish that he is. Um, I'm sure. We've been there again. We just feel like we're at the end. We've cried all the tears that we can. We've felt all the pain that we can. And we're just at the end. And we're just waiting for God to take away this affliction from us. But it's just not happening. David said his strength is failing him because of his affliction. His bones are growing weak. And that, that his bones growing weak, that's again his whole person, his whole body physical, mental, spiritual. It's at the end. It's just growing weak. He's just done with this situation and he's trying to turn it over to God. And he's faced with this choice, whether to, to trust in God like we're trying, like we should do, or whether to go down the, the gloom and doom and despair route. That's where David's at because he's at the end of himself. And that's the choice that we face. That's the moments where we're faced with, are we going to trust in God? And even though things are hard, are we going to continue to trust in his faithfulness? Or are we going to go and just live in our pain and live in our sin and live in our struggle? Um, because of David's enemies, he is in utter contempt of his neighbors and dread of his closest friends even. Um, people see him on the street and they flee from him. He says he's forgotten as though he were dead. This is a situation you may be in your life where things are just really out of your control. And uh, this is, I mentioned it at the beginning, where I'm at right now in my, in my pastoral ministry, I have somebody that's just seemingly is out to get me and is slandering me like David's being slandered. And in those moments, he's slandering you not only to your enemies, but also to your closest friends. And it's hard uh, because you're, people are saying these false things that put you in a bad light. And you have to live in these false things. And, and there's not much that you can do. There's people slandering you on the left and people slandering you on the right. It's driving wedges between you and even your closest friends. Um, and in those moments, it, it can feel just like David feels like him. Like the people are fleeing from him. Uh, people see him and they flee from him. You feel like you're so alone. You feel like you're forgotten. You feel like um, you're dead. You feel like you're just worthless and forgotten. And that's how David feels. David is at that moment where it seems like everyone, everything is against him and everything is pressing against him. Even his closest friends, even his family, because of these false rumors, because of these hardships that he's facing, it feels like they have left him. It feels like he's been left for dead. But yet David will see, he continues, even in the face of this, to trust in God. It'd be easy for me in the face of people spreading false things and saying negative things about me that... Uh, that aren't true and the hardships that I'm facing in my call to ministry right now. It'd be easy to just give up and say, well, God, you didn't make this easy. Uh, you didn't make this easy, so that's obviously a sign that I should just give up. No, that's not the case at all. Even though things can be hard in our lives, even though things can be hard and the plan for, that God has for us are hard, we should never give up. We should continue to trust in God and continue to obey his commandments and live out his calling in our lives. David says that he feels like broken pottery and pottery is an image that and an illustration that the bible uses um, throughout to to just illustrate to illustrate 
how we are formed as Christians, how we are formed into the perfect creation that we are. Um, Jesus uses the image of, of a potter on the pottery wheel forming the clay. That's how we are. When we come to Christ, we're that unformed bundle of clay. And Christ uses our life and our calling and our lives here on earth to form us into the perfect creation. But it's not until we, we are with him in, in, in heaven until our lives here on earth are over that we're formed in that perfect piece of pottery. Um, and God uses the, both the hard times and the, and the good times to form us here in this life into that perfect piece of pottery. But David feels like he's been that piece of pottery. He feels like he's been formed, but not, not only is he not a perfect piece of pottery, not only is he a piece of pottery you'd want to display, but he feels like he's been broken, he's been shattered. And once pottery is broken, of course, it's worthless. It can't be put back together again. And that's what David feels like. And I'm sure there's been times in your life where you feel like that as well. You just feel like you're this broken piece of pottery that can never be put back together again. And, and of course, that's not the case. I praise God that that's not the case. No matter how broken, no matter how defeated you may feel in your life, there is no person, as long as they're in this life, that is too far, that is too broken, that is too, too hurt for God to make into the perfect creation. So even if you feel like you're at the absolute pit, you are not too broken. You are not too far gone for God to begin the process of forming you and making you into the perfect creation. If you just right now uh, put your trust and your faith in God and you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I pray that you make that decision because it's the greatest and most important decision that you can make in your life. And and, and I'll warn you, if you're, about, if you're pondering making that decision, making that decision to follow Jesus Christ for the first time, uh, I'm an example of it. doesn't mean that things go go smoothly. It doesn't mean that the hardships are taken away. Um, in fact, the Bible says that you can still expect hardships uh, because even when you follow Jesus Christ and make him the Savior of your life. But there's a, a confidence and a trust in knowing that there's a greater purpose to your sufferings when you're in Christ. That at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you will be a perfect creation. And one day there will be no more suffering. There will be no more feeling like a broken piece of pottery. There will be no more false rumors about you. There will be no more feeling alone and broken. There will be no more anguish and pain and distress. Your whole soul one day, your whole person will be made new and be made perfect. And you will forever live in perfect fellowship, perfect harmony harmony with your Savior and your Creator, Jesus Christ, Lord. And I, and I pray that you get to experience that truth today, that, that once you do that, you are no longer broken pottery. You are pottery that is being molded and shaped into perfect creation. After all this, after all this struggle and this truth that we just talked about, this being molded and being formed and this confidence we can have in Jesus Christ is how David in verse 14, after all these verses and all these hardships that we just talked about, David is facing. It's how David and how we as well can, in verse 14, we can respond by saying, but David says, but because of all this, in face of all this, I still trust in you, Lord. And I can still say, you are my God. And that's how I can say personally my testimony, even though all the faces and broken relationships and, and hardships in my call to ministry and just hardships in my life in this past season of my life, I can still say, God, in the face of it all, it's not how I would have drew it up. It's not how I want it to go, but I still trust in you, Lord. I still have confidence that this is part of your greater plan. And the plan at the end of the road, at the end of my life, I'll be able to look back and say, wow, God, your plans are good. You Truly, that time of suffering was for my own good. That time of hardship was for my own good. And I can still say, God, you are my God. You are my sovereign Lord. And Jesus Christ, your son, is the savior and the healer and the forgiver and the redeemer of all of my sins. The great mercy giver is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have confidence in that fact. And I pray that um, you can have confidence in that fact. Whether you're living as a Christian, but you're just at a hard time Lord, and you, you need to be reminded of that truth, I pray that this message and these scriptures have done that for you. Or if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, please do so today. Even though the hardships won't go away and even though the hardships may in fact get worse when you follow Jesus Christ. The, the road of the disciple of Christ is hard and it's paved with many tears, but there's a confidence in knowing that you are being molded by the creator of the universe. You're being molded and shaped and, and, and being grown into a perfect creation that one day you will face no more suffering when you, if you're in Jesus Christ. You will face no more hardships. You will live in a perfect body, perfect physical, mental, 
body, emotional, with no more pain, with no more suffering, and you'll forever be able to worship and glorify your Savior through your life and through, through eternity in heaven. I pray that you have that confidence today. And you can, like David, uh, like me, can say, yes, Lord, life is hard and life is really tough, but I trust in you and you are my God, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. I pray that that's your prayer today. Let me end our time together with a prayer and then we'll uh, dismiss. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for those that are hearing this, Lord, wherever they're at, whether they need to make the decision to trust in you as Lord for the first time, to say that you are my God, that Jesus Christ is their Savior for the first time, Lord. Lord, I pray that you use these, this scripture, you use my message um, to, to make lead people to that decision, Lord. Or if people have already made the decision, but they're just experiencing a really hard time in their life, like me, they're experiencing a time of deep trial or a time of trial and hardship, Lord. I pray that this is used to be a reminder that even though the hard times are really, really hard right now, there's no reason to, to sugarcoat it in Christianity. Life is hard whether you're a Christian or not. Lord, but for the Christian, there's a trust and a confidence in knowing that at the end of the day, all this suffering will be able to look back on our life and say, yeah, that suffering, that pain was really worth it. It was for my good because now I have this, I've been made perfect. I've been made whole. I've been made complete um, by the Savior and Creator of the universe, Jesus Christ. And now I can live my eternity in a perfect and, and creation with him where I'll face no hardships, I'll face no struggle, I'll face no slander, I'll face no broken relationships, I'll face no trials, I'll, I'll never feel like broken pottery, I'll never feel alone, I'll never struggle with brokenness, I'll never feel struggle with loneliness, Lord, I'll just be glorified and, and worshiping Jesus Christ for all of my days, Lord. And I pray that all of those who hear this you know, will be able to have that um, truth and that confidence in their lives, Lord. I pray all these things. I pray for each individual that is hearing this, and I pray for them by, um, by name, even though I don't know their names, Lord. You know them, Lord. Use this message in the ways that you see fit, Lord. I pray all these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, again, uh, take time, reflect on Psalm 31. Um, reflect on this message. You can, um, we're at the end of the video, so make sure, and just for fun, watch the Hee Haw video, which is the, the, the doom and gloom, just a fun example of the doom and gloom example, the, the example that we're trying to avoid when we have the choice of how we're going to respond with trials. I pray that you respond to trials by, just like David, by trusting in God and making Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. Thank you. I appreciate you joining us. Like, like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Subscribe on there as well. And also you can check out our website, lovereignite.com. Thank you and may God bless the rest of your day.